But given the function that's continuous over zero all the way up to positive infinity, and if the limit of fx is a as x approaches positive infinity, then we want to show that the limit of 1 over x times the integral from 0 to x, f of t dt, is also equal to a, also as x approaches positive infinity. So first, <coughs> so first method is to use L'Hopital's rule. Since we were given the functions continuous from 0 all the way up to positive infinity, therefore we can just apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. We can say that the function, uh, let's say g of x, is equal to 0 all the way up to x, changing upper bound integral, f of t dt. All right, function in terms of x. So we can easily say that the not only g is differentiable, but also the derivative of g in terms of x happens to be f of x. At every, at every point, at any value, x can be any value from 0 all the way up to positive infinity. It's always differenti uh, differentiated to be this. So therefore, we can just apply L'Hopital's rule. So the limit of this is equal to, first of all, we're going to differentiate the top and bottom, right? So on the bottom, we have just x, because it's 1 over x. So x differentiated to just 1. And also differentiate top, we've already differentiated, f of, f of x. Then we can let x approaches infinity. Then it turns out to be just a. And the second method, method two. So after I'm done with method two, you can realize that we don't even re need the condition of continuity. We all we need is f with, f with Riemann integrable. That's all we need. I'll show you why. First of all, <coughs> since it's uh, since it's uh, co continuous. Right? and therefore it's Riemann integrable. Then, if I say f of x approaches a, then let me just use special condition, special case. If a is equal to 0, right, then limit is equal to 0. That means as x, so given any epsilon positive number, we can always find a positive number again, so capital A greater than 0. So whenever x is bigger than a, bigger than or equal to a, we can always have f of x minus 0. Absolute value, it can be less than half of y, let's just say. So that means we also want to show that the absolute value of this expression can be also smaller than y. So how can we do that? So first of all, since we found a capital A positive number, then that motivates us to maybe break the integral into two parts. Right? So that the so first of all, I want to I want to prove that the limit that the absolute value of x integral from zero to x ft dt can be smaller than y, right? That's what I want. So what I have is that the same, so left-hand side, that is equal to, I don't need absolute value for x, because x can, is already bigger than this positive number, right? Already big enough. So the integral is split into two parts. So first part, I call it uh, 0 to a, f of t dt. The second part, call it a to x, f of t dt. Right? Then we can use the triangle inequality and uh, distribute the absolute value onto this and that. Right? But then we can... 
So less than or equal to. Then we can distribute the absolute value inside the integral, right, onto the integrand. Right, make it even bigger. Right? So I have absolute value, absolute value. Right? Since since it's a function given to be continuous everywhere, therefore from zero to positive infinity everywhere. Then, of course, from zero to a, it's also continuous. Therefore, it must be bounded. Right? So uh, there is a positive number, capital M, right, so that f of t, absolute value, is less than or equal to n over, over 0 to a, right, this interval. Right, this is obvious. So therefore, we can further say that that is less than or equal to First of all, x at the bottom, and replace absolute value with a capital M, right? So M times A, right? That's the result of the uh, integral once I replace it with a uh, constant. So therefore, right, so A is yeah, A is positive. The whole thing is positive. That's fine. And how about this, right? So like I said, when when x is big enough, bigger than or equal to the positive number we've just found, then the f function value can be small enough. Right? So we can replace the integrand with uh, half of epsilon, right? <clears throat> the half of epsilon is a constant again. So multiply by x minus a. Right, that's what I have. So again, I haven't, because look, because now the trouble is that from mathematical sense, we already realized that apart from half of epsilon, this part just x minus a over x, is this fraction small enough or bounded? Yes, feels like so, because x minus some positive number is smaller than x, so, so the, uh, and also bigger than zero. So the uh, numerator is a little bit smaller than the denominator, right? but still both positive. So that means the whole fraction, apart from half of epsilon, the whole fraction can be between 0 and 1, right? So therefore, we can replace the fraction just with 1 and make it a little bit bigger, right? So x, mi x minus a is smaller than x, bigger than 0. Yeah. So x bigger than a, therefore x minus a is bigger than 0. Right? So therefore, x minus a over x. x is also positive, so therefore also positive. And also smaller than or equal to, <coughs> like I said, smaller than x. Right? x uh, will subtract some positive number from x. Right? So therefore, x over x. 1, right? So replace it with just 1. So less than or equal to half of epsilon, this part, right? Then we haven't solved with this guy, this problem, right? So right now x is still uh, out of control, right? We, we need to control it. So the key is that if we want to show that this part is also small enough, because remember, a and M are also fixed, already fixed. All we have to show is that the bottom can be big enough so that the whole fraction can be small enough, right? So now it's easy. So how? Like I said, we've already required X to be big enough, right? Now I require X to be even bigger enough, right? So I require 
So right now, I require this part to be small enough, right? Smaller than half of epsilon. When is this true? Right? It's true when multiply x over there, right? X, x is positive. So x bigger than divide this over, right? I have, well, I have epsilon twice a times m, right? When x is big enough, then this can be small enough, right? So therefore, this can be small enough. <coughs> Half of epsilon, right? So all together, epsilon, right? So have we found a positive number relating to the given epsilon? Have we? Yes. First of all, we found a positive number, capital A. Then we further found another positive number, this number. When x is really big enough, how big? When x is... When x is bigger than or equal to a naught, a naught is maximum of maximum of capital A and this number, right? Twice of A M over Epsilon. Or we can write A naught is capital A plus twice of A M over Epsilon, just to make sure that it can be really big enough. Right, the bigger one out of those two. So therefore, when x is really big enough, bigger than this and also bigger than that, then the left-hand side can be really small enough, really smaller than epsilon. So I'm done, right? I want to prove. I really prove. So I'm done with the special case when a is equal to zero, then this is true. Right? So now you can see that we don't even require f to be continuous. All we need is f to be Riemann integrable. That's all we need. So uh, this condition may not be necessary, but, but, that, but it's okay. Because now I can deal with the general case when a is n any real number, also true. The reason is because f of x minus a can approach zero, obviously as x approaches positive infinity, right? So therefore, maybe I can just denote it as g of x. So g, so in other words, approaches 0. All right, so this time I can apply my special case when the limit is 0. So, so like I said, the lim so 1 over x integral from 0 to x, g of t, dt, easily approach zero. All right. So in other words, one over x integral from zero to x, g, gt is f of t minus a, dt, approach zero, which, which means we can just split up the integral and say 1 over x integral from 0 to x f of t dt minus the second part. What is it? 1 over, don't forget that, still 1 over x, right? Because it's a common, common factor. Then we integrate from 0 to x. Still, we have a, which is just constant, right? So this approach 0. So which means th this integral is what? A times x. Yes. So 1 over x times a <coughs> times ax is what? Just a, just, just minus a, right? So, so all of a sudden this becomes just, this becomes just, just a. Right? So which means 
uh, this function minus a approaches zero, which means this function approaches a, right? So this function approaches a, right? Like we desire, right? really approaches a. Now that I'm done with the uh, with the main problem, so th this reminds me of a previous problem I previously done, the Cauchy proposition, which says if a real sequence has a limit, let's call it a, then we can easily conclude that the arithmetic mean as a sequence also has a limit, the same limit. Right, so uh, previously I used a similar method. Yeah, that is to uh, split, just, just like I split apart the integral into two parts, then proved that each part is small enough, right? First part smaller than half y, y, y. Second part also smaller than half of y. When x is bigger than, uh, than the first, then the first positive number I found and bigger than the second positive number, so bigger than all of them, that's when uh, it's small enough. All right, so previous, I used similar method. I also bro broke apart into the first a plus all the way up to a capital N finite sum. Then the second remaining sum, right? Then each part is small enough. So this is like the discrete version. And this is the continuous version.